Hi, welcome to Brianna's Pickleball, and in this video, we're going to go over the top seven mistakes that we see at the 3.0 and 3.5 levels. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Let's jump right in. All right, so now let's start off with common mistake number one, and that is not having a good ready position at the non-volley zone. What I see a lot of is I see players not getting back to their ready position when they're up here at the line, and in general, just not having an awareness of where their paddle is. So they can be dinking or hitting the ball and their paddle is in just different positions. So this is kind of what I see here. Okay, so sometimes it could be down. Sometimes it's off to the right over here. Sometimes they just leave it there. So again, this is really important because in this game you can get attacked and sped up upon at any time. So I like to hold mine around waist level and a little bit towards the backhand side. Remember, something as simple as this is very, very important. So as me and Caden dink right here, I'm going to make sure after I dink the ball, I'm also not just looking at his shot, but I wanna return into a good ready position so I can be ready for the ball. So it's gonna look like this. Here we go. Okay. So now no matter what happens, if Caden or whoever I'm playing decides to attack, I'll be ready for a dink and I'll also be ready for a speed up. All right, so let's talk about common mistake number two. One thing we see way too often is people returning the ball and not coming forward to the kitchen line. When you're returning, you're actually at the advantage to win that point. But when you don't come up to the kitchen line, you don't apply pressure and you actually put yourself at a disadvantage staying back. All right, so like Caden just said, it is really, really important that you get in a habit of trying to get to that non-volley zone line after your return. Remember, your partner is up here in an offensive position already, and they are ready to attack the ball, any high balls that come through here. If your partner stays back, then you are in a one up, one back situation now, and all the team is going to do is drive it back to your partner's feet back there and now the net person, me in this example, is vulnerable. So after a return, let's say Caden okay, hits that return, come up here, okay? Now as he comes up and we're both set here, now we're both in a good offensive possession, uh, position to keep our opponents back. All right, so now let's hop into common mistake number three and that is focusing too much actually on the soft game. A lot of times players come into the game and they are taught just to dink and this is the soft game that we need to learn. Now that is true, we do need to learn the soft game, but a lot of times players will not work on their volleys, which is really important because at the 3035 level, you're going to be dealing with bangers. So if you don't work on your volleys, it's gonna be really, really hard for you to beat players that hit really hard. So yes, you do need to work on your soft game, but also we need to work on our volleys and, and hitting hard balls back as well. So I have me and Caden up at the non-volley zone line here. One just easy way to do it is just volley back and forth. And when you're just starting out, I would just recommend that you start off really slow. The most important thing is control and that we're hitting the ball out in front. So here we go. So really slow volleys here, Caden. Good. Okay. Notice here, um, for the majority, I'm gonna be taking backhands, especially if the ball is headed towards my body. Obviously, if it's hit over here, I'm gonna to have to take a forehand. And the last thing you wanna notice is my strokes are um, very, very compact, right? I'm not, I'm not swinging at the ball. It's just a push through, maybe one to two feet, a uh, push forward. So as we showed you there, we start out a little bit slower, but as you guys get more comfortable going slow, you guys can start to speed it up and start to improve that hand speed. The last thing I do wanna mention is returning back to a ready position after every bowl. Just like we first talked about after every shot, we don't wanna just be watching it, we wanna make sure we return back to a good ready position. Hi, if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you're interested in exclusive on-court training with me, go ahead and go to briones.pickleball.com. Now, let's get right back to the video. 
All right, common mistake number four that I see is people changing their grip when they're here at the kitchen line, all right? One thing to keep in mind is this game is fast. So if you guys are having to play a fastball and have to think about your grip at the same time, things can get pretty chaotic. One thing I like to do is stay in a continental grip. That is also our standard handshake grip. If you guys are in this grip, you guys are set up well to hit both your forehand and backhand without having to change your grip. One thing to add is I can dink, I can volley, and I can hit an overhead all in this continental position. Just like Caden said and demonstrated right there, in this continental grip, it is a universal grip and it's really good because you can hit all those shots. At more advanced levels, you may uh, learn switching grips slightly, but as a beginner in that 3.0 to 3.5 level, again, we really wanna concentrate in practicing in that continental. One of the things Common grips that I usually see is on the backhand side when um, I have my continental grip, but for the backhand, I actually rotate my hand like this. And again, sometimes you can get some good power and you can actually reach here and do that. But again, the problem with this kind of grip here is when it comes to your forehand side, we're really, really vulnerable. And on low balls, it's really, really tough. So I know that there's different kinds of grips that could work for pickleball, but if you are not comfortable in a continental, I would definitely go out there and practice it. All right, so now let's hop into most common mistake at the 3.0, 3.5 level. Number five, and that is forgetting to recover back to center. In this scenario here, I'm just talking about recovering back to where you came from. So let's say me and Caden are playing down the line here and I have to move out for the ball. And I want you to think about this, every time you move for the ball, you move for a reason, right? To go get it, right? Or to bring that contact closer to you. When you move out, we cannot forget to recover back and move back to center or where we were, okay? So again, we're gonna be dinking here. It's really, really important that if we move for the ball, we move to our left, we come back and to our right. Or sometimes we may have to, what? Move in on short balls we gotta make sure we clear out and move back so that we don't get caught in the non-volley zone. And then again, at times, let's say I'm moving back for a dink, I get pushed back. What do we see a lot? We see players getting stuck back here and then now they're on the defense. If we move back off the line, after we hit the ball, we wanna recover back to the line. All right, common mistake number six that I see way too often is people never stopping their feet and actually getting balanced. So when you're working your way up to this kitchen line from the baseline, it's really important to make sure that you guys are able to stop your feet and get balanced while you guys hit. First, I'm gonna show you guys what not to do. So in that example, I ran through my shot as I was hitting it, more focused on the shot that was coming in. But as you guys noticed, my feet never stopped and I never actually was able to get prepared for that next ball. So when you guys are coming in, it's really important to stop your feet, get your body weight set and balanced, and then you guys can hit your shot. I'll show you guys how to do it. So in that example, I did use a split step there. As you guys get higher in level, it is important to use a split step, but for right now, all I want you guys to really focus on is stopping your feet and getting balanced. All right, so now let's hop into common mistake number seven, and I couldn't tell you how many times I see this on the court. And if you can just fix this one thing, it's going to put you and your partner in a better position to attack more balls and also to defend, okay? So this is what we see a lot. Me and Kaden are dinking here. And uh, let's say, you know, there's some dinks that go by and let's say uh, a dink is coming diagonally to Kaden um, and then he gets pulled way out on the back end. And then what usually happens here? Um, your partner is going way out for the ball. He's hitting a backhand dink over there. And I kind of say, Kaden, have a good vacation, see you later. But what happens? We have a huge hole in the middle, okay? And to not get super technical, 
This is, um, again, this terminology is called shading, but just to keep it really simple, all we wanna do is we just wanna follow our partner. So, okay, then let's just get back into a good ready position here. Let's say the ball is being moved around. If Caden gets pulled off, I just, I wanna move over right to here and I wanna cover and fill in the space. Now, um, people ask me this all the time, how far you should move over. If Caden takes a couple steps over, I'm gonna take a couple steps over, right? So go back over there, right? And then let's say he hits it back cross court. Okay, now I gotta cover my down the line and then he slides back over. So there's many different situations, but again, this concept of following your partner is really, really important all the way up to the highest level. So again, just really simply, if you see your partner go, then you make sure you come and follow them. And then obviously we gotta make sure that we recover back. All right, so those are the seven most common mistakes that we see at that 3035 level. Remember, these are really, really simple things, but if you do them all, it's really going to improve your game and you'll get out there and the game will seem a lot slower because you're now doing the right thing, you're in better position and you're more well balanced. Thanks so much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. For exclusive pickleball content from me, go ahead and check out briones.pickleball.com. For awesome paddles like this one, check the description below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.